Good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole, and I am the parent support worker for the Niagara Catholic District School Board Early On Child and Family Centers. I am here today for our weekly coffee and conversation in which all parents, grandparents, guardians, and caregivers are welcome. Our program topics revolve around ensuring that you feel well, confident, and present in your parenting and caregiving role. As always, if you are unable to sit with me now, you are welcome to warm up your coffee and sit with me at a more convenient time. Our video content is available on our Facebook page and YouTube channel, so be sure to follow and subscribe to stay up to date with our videos. Last week, we learned how to recognize stress in our children by reviewing the different types of stress, stress symptoms, and potential stressors for our children. We then wrapped up by discussing tips for recognizing stress in our children. In the next three weeks, we are going to discuss stress management strategies. So we are going to start off with stress management activities that help prevent stress. And then we will discuss symptom reduction strategies and then end off with learning about some problem solving skills. So let's get started with stress prevention strategies. So first and foremost, stress can't literally be prevented. Stress prevention strategies do not entail protecting our kids from stress altogether. It means that we consider what measures can we take to reduce the chances of our child experiencing stress. So let's start looking at this idea with the Kids Have Stress 2 activity called Things That Upset or Stress a Child. So the idea of this first activity is to find ourselves taking a child's mindset. As adults, it can be difficult to either think back to our own childhood stress or to take the perspective of our own children. Because of this, we can't assume we know what's going on for a child. So before getting into eliminating stress, we need to start the conversation of what causes our children's stress. So this activity encourages you to sit down with your child and take time to ask them about times when they feel worried, upset, or stressed. We have discussed in the past the importance of emotional literacy, um, and this activity further emphasizes that importance by giving the child a chance to first identify and then express their feelings. We know that when children talk about their feelings, it can reduce stress and aid in that development of emotional regulation. So why not start there? The child will now have an opportunity to share in their own words what exactly is bothering them, and they will learn that they can ask for help. So how exactly do we do this? Well, the first thing you can help your child um, do is sort out how they are feeling by asking open-ended questions. So this means we ask them, you know, how are you feeling today? And if they seem hesitant to share, then we can describe what we might think that they're feeling. You know, earlier today, you seemed to be feeling a bit down, were you? Or you seemed a little sad and restless earlier. Is there something that is worrying you or making you feel upset? So we can use um, books or puppets to also help the child talk about their emotions. So this really links back to our coffee and conversation on emotional literacy, so I strongly encourage you to check that out if you haven't already. But the three key messages within this activity are, number one, feelings change. We want to help our children understand that even though these feelings seem very powerful at the time, they do not last. So feelings will come and go all throughout the day like riding the waves of an ocean, and it's important that our, our children understand this. Um, the next point is that it's all right to cry. Um, our children need to know that, you know, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be upset. Their feelings are real and natural, and it helps if you let yourself feel those emotions. And the last one is to expand their vocabulary. So young children understand simple words such as mad, sad, glad, or upset to explain how they feel. But you can help them find more words for those feelings. You know, oh look, oh you look sad today. Are you feeling disappointed or frustrated? So we're giving them those extra words based on the, the simpler words that they are already using. The next activity we have from the Kids Have Stress 2 program is called Stop, Look, and Listen. So this is really an addition to the activity we just discussed. 
Um, this activity will quite literally remind you to stop, look, and listen to your child at least once a day. So I, I quote the Kids Have Stress to handout of this activity when I say, it's important to know what bothers and upsets your children. Don't wait until you think your child is stressed. Ask them, when things are calm, what they worry about. Then listen very carefully. Try not to finish their sentences or interrupt. Stop, look, and listen. The Kids Have Stress 2 program suggests that you choose a moment in which you dis or you choose a good moment in which you decide to stop. So perhaps you decide to stop and talk to your child while you're doing an everyday activity together, like getting ready for bed, folding laundry, or doing a puzzle. Um, they just suggest that you, you ensure the moment in which you decide to stop, you know that you are relaxed and can be, be together without feeling rushed or interrupted. So let's not try and have this conversation as we're rushing the kids to get ready for school. They encourage you to take that moment to ask how they're doing. You can say something like, I know there are things that upset you sometimes. Can you tell me about them maybe? And then give your child the time and space to answer without interrupting. Even if that means giving them a few hours for them to reflect on the question, come back during dinner time and, and really feel the um, ability to give the answer. They then instruct you to look at least once a day to casually check in on your child. So get down to their level and just make that eye-to-eye -eye co connection that's so important. And note, are they looking back at you with happiness and excitement? Do they appear relaxed? Or are they avoiding making eye contact with you? Do they seem to be tense? Just be sure to take note of that reaction that they are showing in the moment. And then, of course, you need to listen. And I mean really listen. You know, you might have an answer that you're expecting and want to encourage them by giving them those words, but it's important to just be still in these moments and allow them to find the words on their own and really feel what they're telling you. Of course, with the real little ones, we do want to encourage the use of those different words. So we can offer that type of advice, but when we're hoping to just have that conversation, let's sit back and just let them feel it out. At the end of the day, the drive home message is that whether or not your child seems fine, seems frustrated, or darn right ready to explode, if they have something to say, you have to stop, look, and listen. So these two activities just remind us that in order to prevent stress, we need to understand our kids and be open to the idea that they may need our support to feel less stress. In a moment, we are going to discuss ways that we can make our home less stressful for our kids, but how could you know what tips were helpful to you if you hadn't first listened to your child? So we'll move on to our final activity for stress prevention, and this one is called Things That Can Help Reduce Stress for My Child. So parents can create a less stressful home, making the life at home more green light and less red light for their children. And Kids Have Stress 2 provides um, some basic key tips in creating a less stressful environment for our kids. So these include the following. Number one is to assess your lighting. Very bright light can be overstimulating. I find this true even for myself. I am super sensitive to light and know that I have to be cognizant of the energy that different lighting brings me. Um, number two is to declutter and tidy up. You know, kids are messy. There's no doubt about it. And uh, kids' toys are, in my opinion, the very worst toys to clean because one block activity quickly becomes a 100-piece set scattered all over the floor. <laughs> the same way that this can stress you out will also stress your child out. So it's best to consider how you can create order in your space. Number three is to utilize music. So music is a great way to set a mood. If it's rest time, you can put on some very soft, soothing music. During play, quiet background music that's happy or enjoyable can actually help stimulate activity. And that's certainly better than, you know, having the TV on in the background, as that will likely just distract the child. Um, and then number four is to create a comfy corner. I love this idea, and I can't wait to have a home where I can make myself a comfy corner. 
this corner can be made to look a little secluded from the rest of the room, so maybe by placing a table close to a wall corner, changing a corner with paint, whatever you feel is um, easiest and most efficient for you. And then this corner can be filled with all of the things that make your child or you, if you're making your own, feel better when upset. So we can have blankets, pillows, stuffed animals, plants, coloring books, crayons, any of those sorts of things that bring that happiness back to ourselves. So the Kids Have Stress 2 also provided a checklist for parents to assess nine different ways that they can create a less stressful environment. These nine items can be assessed for whether or not they happen most days, some days, or a few days within the week. And when we evaluate the list in this way, then we are opening ourselves up for both positive recognition of what we're good at and a reminder of what we could probably do more of. So I'm going to read the nine items um, and you can jot them down or you can just listen along, whatever works best for you. So the, the scale or the questions are, does your child, number one, Get enough exercise and free time to play and unwind. Does your child eat healthy, well-balanced food? Does your child have individual time with parents to share good times and problems? Does your child receive hugs and signs of affection? <clears throat> Does your child have regular bedtime routine with time to be quiet and calm down? Does your child get enough sleep? Does your child get organized for the next day before bedtime? Does your child have a family that laughs and enjoys being together? And the last one, does your child live with an adult who shows how to manage stress in a healthy way? So this is an example list of protective factors in your child's life. So what that means is that if you've checked off most days on a large part of this list, it's likely that your child will experience less stress and or be able to tackle it more efficiently when it presents itself. But this is not a definitive list, and it's important to remember that each family is unique and will be able to offer their own protective factors for their children. We will all do the best with what we have available. So when we consider the list of ways to create a less stressful environment, that in itself can sometimes become stressful and we kind of feel the weight or the shame of not being able to provide our kids with all of these things. But obviously not all of these things are going to be approachable by all families. You know, some kids come from broken homes or broken families. Some kids' temperament will get in the way of getting enough sleep or eating a healthy, well-balanced diet. And if you have a picky eater, then I'm sure you know about this. You know, you can offer all the fruit and vegetables possible. But if your kid only wants to eat hot dogs and mayonnaise, there isn't much you'll be able to do other than getting creative and how you're sneaking the good stuff into their diet. So the point I'm trying to make here is that I'm not here to advise you to check off most days um, for everything on that list. Rather, I'd like you to consider what your child has talked with you about regarding your own stress and implement those items into your list. Perhaps your child lets you know that they feel upset and stressed when they go too long without seeing their grandparents because they love them and worry about them. Well, then perhaps you would then add to your list, my child has the chance to video chat with their grandparents once a week. So if, you're ch if your family is split up and the thought of, you know, ensuring that your child has a, a family that laughs and enjoys being together makes you feel stressed and worried and upset or shameful or any of those nasty emotions, then I want to tell you that it's okay. It's okay to do the best with what you have available. Family could be just you and your little one. The two of you taking the time to laugh and enjoy being together is more than enough to check that box off. However, if you feel an overwhelming stress that prevents you from supporting your child to the capacity that you'd hope, I want you to know that there are resources available. So for one, you can always contact your family doctor or contact us here at the center to refer you to appropriate supports. You can visit the Kids Have Stress 2 website or a website called stressstrategies.ca 
or of course you can always utilize the toll-free number 211 for a confidential referral to appropriate supports. So to conclude this section of our stress management activities, the goal is to just find ways to reduce stress, but not necessarily elim eliminate stress. You'll recall that not all stress is bad, so we actually don't want to shelter our children from all types of stress. We want to eliminate the opportunity for chronic or persistent stress, and we want to ensure that we give the proper tools to deal with the tolerable stress that our children are going to encounter. So please, take some time this week to sit down with your child and just listen. Try your very best to actually learn from them and open your eyes to your child's heart. Next week, we are going to discuss stress symptom reduction strategies, meaning, okay, we did what we could, but here we are experiencing that stress. What can we do to make the symptoms, such as a headache or body tension or irritability, less impactful? So how can we make those symptoms less impactful? How can we fight that stress response and find ourselves at the green light? Just a reminder not to forget to check out our mindful mini activities tomorrow. Miss Diane is providing some wonderful tools. And don't forget to be easy on yourself and reflect on your own stress as well. Take the time this week to not only talk with your kids about stress, but to also have that internal dialogue as well to consider what you can do for your own self to prevent future, future stress. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your evening. I hope you have a relaxed and reflective week, and I will talk to you soon.